right, 5 o'clock. We have got a hot weekend ahead that will be mostly dry and that will not have any impacts from Hurricane Isaias. However, as we get into Monday and now possibly early Tuesday, that is when we will have impacts here in central North Carolina. So as we take a step back, kind of digest things as we get ready to head into the weekend, the latest from the National Hurricane Center, I have that update for you. But here's my thinking on what we need to focus on. It is looking more and more likely that we will have impacts because in the last 24 hours, the track has shifted a little bit to the west. And more shifts to the west is not good for us. That puts us closer to the eye. We want those shifts to the east, but this is not wish caching, unfortunately. It's forecasting. It is still a fast mover, meaning it won't be here for a long duration of time, bringing someone 10 or 20 inches of rain. I think the most we'll see in the state is five, maybe six inches, and that's going to be along the coast. So the forecast shifted west the past 24 hours. But now it may be a strong tropical storm instead of a hurricane. But remember, the difference between a strong tropical storm and a hurricane is technically only one or two miles per hour. So sure, it's a different name, but the mindset that we need to take and the impacts we could see aren't going to be that different. What impacts will we see? Rough surf, rip currents along our coastline as early as this weekend. The strong winds, the heavy rain Monday and Tuesday. Here in central North Carolina, we will have some breezes, probably not strong enough to do damage with the exception of the I-95 quarter. That's possible, not likely. And then we will see some rain. Again, we're talking Monday and Tuesday, so we've got a mostly dry Friday night and a mostly dry hot weekend to get through. The very latest from the National Hurricane Center just came in right at 5. 75 miles per hour. So the big story late last night was it became a hurricane. It's actually held steady more or less throughout the day today. It's getting a little more symmetrical. It's starting to look more like a tropical system, and that's important. It's showing us that it's getting a little better organized over the very warm waters in the Bahamas. Here's that close-up track again. We expect it to weaken a little as it comes up the east coast being around Charleston about Monday afternoon. But then, as it's going to be moving more than 20 miles per hour, it'll zoom past our coastline and probably over parts of our coastline, if not even farther inland, as we head into Monday afternoon and Monday night. And then it'll be up here well up the coast by Tuesday at 2 p.m. So Monday afternoon, Tuesday morning is going to be the time we're watching. Remember, the cone of uncertainty is telling us where the eye of the storm is forecast to be at that particular time. So Monday afternoon, Monday night, it could be right in the middle of that cone. And it's a four to 500 mile wide storm. So that's what it could look like we would definitely have impacts. If it's on the far eastern side, we're still going to have impacts. Obviously not as drastic, but we're still going to get it. And then if it's on the west side, if it's west of us, closer to the triad, we would have even worse impacts. So everything in that cone is still on the table, as are all the possibilities of what we could see. Let's look at the computer models, because I don't like these trends either. Again, these computer models, the two things we're looking for, the trends and the cluster. Well, the trend has been to push everything a little more to the west, and we don't like that. And the cluster is really lining up right over the coastal plain east of our area, a little closer to I-95. So we'll watch that very closely going forward because there will be tweaks going forward and changes going forward. So we'll have to watch these updates because it'll impact what happens to us. Still 